um, Fatma Barayan is the chairperson of the Youth Enterprise Development Fund and she's here as our guest this hour. Fatma, good morning. I'm good. How are you? Very well. Mm. Good to have you in the hot seat this morning. Yeah, and then, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah? Should we add, should we add <laughs> finally? the most challenging panel. <laughs> should we add finally or we just let it go for now? Let go for that. <laughs> we let it go for now. Yeah, but I extend my apologies. Mm. Yeah. Why? Don't worry. You're Fatma, here. Mm. We, we understand. Yes. <laughs> and, and this is not to placate you. Yes. We actually do. Mm. Yes, we we understand mm. how things work sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. To All the same. Yeah, very good to have you here. And on top of that, City even wants to welcome you properly. So City has proverbs. He goes different African countries. Mm -hmm. This this week we travelled to the Republic of Congo. This time he let me come with him. But yes. you know he's gonna give you the proverb. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you think about that. <laughs> uh, this is not to be confused with Congo DRC. This is Congo Brazzaville. Mm -hmm. Yes, that country next to Chad. Mm. Okay. To go ahead doesn't mean you have arrived. Mm -hmm. That is a proverb. Uh, do you want me to translate it to like the Swahili proverb whereby they say, Kutangulia uh, kufika? <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, that will mean that uh, in life, uh, yes. it doesn't matter who gets where they want to be first. It's all about, uh, I will simply say the end justifies the means. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. Okay. The end justifies the means. Yes. Oh, okay. mm. uh, yeah, sure. See, see, one of the beautiful things about asking our guests to interpret, we were saying it in an earlier hour, is the diversity of interpretation. I know. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, that's that's what gives this particular proverb even greater richness. So Indeed. Mm. Yes. Treasure. Gems, mm -hmm. and that's what we're talking about today. Exactly. Apparently, there's a gem in the Youth Enterprise Development Fund. But so, you as the chairperson of the fund, let's just get into it this morning and ask. First of all, we hear so many funds: women's fund, 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 and then there's one for the youth. Mm -hmm. But this one specifically is enterprise. Okay, just do for us an overview. Mm -hmm. What's this fund about? Who is it for? What is it about? Okay, thank you so much. Do allow me to give a brief, a brief history on the youth fund. Mm. Uh, the Youth Enterprise Development Fund commenced in 2006, and uh, the same transformed into a state corporation in 2007 under the legal order number three. And uh, Youth Enterprise Development Fund, its core mandate is to support the youth through enterprise development by providing access to credit, also as well to provide with them marketing and linkages support. Also, as Youth Fund, we also uh, engage youth on entrepreneurship skills, among other trainings. It is our core mandate, also guided by the Constitution of Kenya, Article uh, 55, mm -hmm. to ensure that the youth have access to uh, job employment as well as access to education and training and also to associate themselves or be represented in matters political social and economic spheres of life so youth fund comes in here to uh, support the youths to ensure that the Kenyan youth are able to create their own job employment and also employment for the other youths within the country mm -hmm. yes where do the funds for the fund <laughs> come pa from pardon where do the funds Okay, for we, the fund come from? We, we have disbursements from the exchequer. We also received uh, grants and donations from different stakeholders as well as uh, we have our own income generating programs like uh, the commercial infrastructure like uh, uh, in the cause of a uh, youth fund we have been having a, a department specifically for commercial infrastructure whereby at some point uh, we had stalls whereby we could uh, rent them out to youth so that they can uh, conduct their businesses so through these stores we generate income and uh, as a as a board uh, when we joined, we have also uh, re-engineered and uh, strategized to have other ways of generating income for the fund. Mm -hmm. We also get um, the, the interest from the loans, and I will also say and appreciate that the interns from the public service, that's a way it's also a, a resource for the fund, because uh, it helps on cost cutting, and uh, we get to get so many youths working for the fund and ensuring that uh, they give the support to the rest of the youths of this nation. Mm. Yes. So how does it work exactly? Okay, uh, when a youth walks in the, in our office to uh, acquire the loan, the first thing they do is they come up with a concept. So when they walk up, with, when they walk in with a concept, uh, we try to understand uh, so that they can give a proof of con of the concept. 
and uh, we normally have our officers uh, of a department in charge of enterprise development that takes them through this concept and also coming up with the uh, business proposals thereafter we, we we try to give them a platform for prototyping just to, sh to see whether this uh, whatever concept of business idea they have is viable mm -hmm. uh, out there so thereafter uh, we we offer them the loans because we have different uh, uh, different types of loan products depending on whether it's a group or individual or those venturing in talent or uh, agriculture so when we give them the loans we make sure that we have officers in each and every county so our officers uh, will be visiting their 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 businesses and uh, as they visit they they always monitor on whether the business is a uh, still is continuing is it sustainable and they tend to engage with them and interact with the youth just to find out in any event that the business is not uh, really doing well what could be the problem and at that instant we the officers provide them with uh, uh, solutions and uh, also encourage them not to give up because you know when you're starting a business the best thing that we need to uh, to understand is that uh, we need to be patient and then you know the the biggest mistake that the youth will make is that uh, they always like to there's lack of foresight you always want to do a business just to get a job but that's not the point mm -hmm. here yeah Orman, tell us a little bit about yourself who are you i am a mother of two mm. i am an advocate by profession mm. and i am the chairperson of the youth enterprise development fund board before you became chairman of the youth development enterprise forward going movement youth assistance before all this what did you do i was vying for women rep seat in mombasa under the uda ticket yeah. so i'm also a politician yes, yes. <laughs> well that is a very 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 good thing why did you go into politics Okay, I always have an interest at heart, especially for the women, and mm. that is why I decided to vie for that post. Mm. Um, I am an advocate by, uh, by profession, as I mentioned, and it is through uh, representation uh, of women's uh, um, rights. I realized that, like, for example, in Mombasa, in Mombasa we tend to see that most of the women, um, they, li they lack uh, awareness, they like to be involved, there's lack for them to be involved in most of the political, economic, even social spheres. And that is why I started by uh, uh, registering a foundation which I run and has started doing most of the community work which were mostly based on women and uh, youths and also PWDs. So it is through this and also by providing pro bono uh, services to the people of Mombasa, it is through this that the women of Mombasa and uh, I, since it was my passion, we all agreed that I think it's time we need a leader. The mistake that happens in Mombasa is that uh, people tend to, to fail and choose the right leaders are uh, sorry to say but and that is why we are advocating for the youth for this nation to forget about uh, uh, the care allow me to say during elections that's the biggest mistake that <laughs> youths <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, you know, you'll get to see, you'll get uh, so many people telling you that oh, Moshima to Jakula, Moshima Ivy, and it, uh, it's so unfortunate that during election, the very day of election, you'll tend to see that most of these leaders, they tend to buy off those votes, and you know, our people forget about uh, all that they have uh, seen in a leader, and you know, people make mistake by voting in the wrong people. Okay. And that is why we don't even get a chance to be on the table to discuss matters, policy, as youth or even women, uh, or to implement what uh, any leader uh, through their manifestos uh, told the people that this is what I'm going to do when I become uh, your leader. So you come from Mombasa County? Yes. Now, outside the uh, position of women rep, as we call it, yeah. how many elected women leaders do you have in Mombasa County? Um, quite a number of MCAs and uh, I will say two MPs that will include uh, the member of parliament Likoni, Honorable Mishi Mboko and the women rep, the current women Which rep. Which means the people of Mombasa are willing to elect women into positions yes. of authority. Yes, yes. Alright, now let's go back to the youth fund. Mm -hmm. From the time you took over as chair, how many new groups or individual youths 
have this enterprise managed to assist let me be honest with you ct i came to know of youth fund at the time of my appointment i wouldn't want to say shame but allow me to say shame mm. and immediately as a board we decided that the most important thing that we need to do is to make sure that people out there know the value of youth fund especially the youths of this nation mm. and that is why you will agree with me you can confirm that uh, ever since this board came into place youth fund has been more visible than before mm. what have you done to make it more visible we started by you know i think in every organization it all depends with the uh, the structures and uh, whether people have that motivation to work mm. so as a board we realized that uh, the organizational structure and the staffs uh, there was a little bit of uh, them not being motivated I will say that mm. there were some few issues that we had to restructure our organization in terms of the organizational structure and I'm proud to say that youth fund now currently uh, this uh, gender diversity you will see that uh, out of 204 uh, staffs we have like 55.9 who are male and 44.1 who are female unlike before mm. and the same applies that we have quite had uh, many success stories through youth fund we've been able to disperse around uh, when when youth fund started it was at 5b and uh, in 2021 14.2 and currently 15 billion that is the, those are the funds those are the funds yeah that we have been for the youth fund that we have been dispersing and uh, we, and it's a revolving fund so we get the, from the instant and we the interest and we keep on dispersing yeah so in every county like i will say um we have been able to create jobs opportunities because uh, so far we have been able to create job opportunities around i will say 1 million uh, 985000 thereabouts yeah and you would agree with me that um you know as far as smes 70 percent of them fail but at least we are some we, we also contribute to us we also contribute to the job uh, creation mm. in this country yeah what are some of the businesses mm. i mean because i would assume that the youth fund mm. is of course dispersing loans mm -hmm. and hearing from people with you know um ideas that they would have for business but i would uh, assume also that there's a management thereafter so what kind of businesses have been have been uh, established as a result of getting capital from the youth fund again because one of the biggest cries from y y people who want to start businesses they say that the l the biggest challenge to that is access to capital right so what are some of the things that we've seen having started as a result of funds that they've received from the fund oh. Okay, first of all, allow me to say this. Uh, there was a complaint about youth fund and how to access credit because of the time frame. But uh, we, it's important we make people realize that uh, everything starts with a step, like explained from the concept to the finality. And uh, as a board, we, uh, one of the things that we have done is to amend our credit policies so that it can be reasonably uh, accessible to the youths of this nation. I'll allow me to give examples. Some of the youths who have been have benefited from youth fund. I give an example of um, <clears throat> here in Nairobi. Uh, there's a youth who started a company. It's called uh, Ches, uh, Cheska Limited. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've benefited through asset financing of uh, 2.8 million. What they normally do is uh, hiring cars. But now, uh, recently, they were able to escalate and bought their own van. And uh, another example I would like to give is in um, in uh, in uh, Bomet, mm. a youth who engages in hot hot uh, in uh, horticulture. Mm -hmm. he, they uh, he grows uh, passion uh, among avocados, among other fruits. Mm -hmm. And uh, through this business, he has been able to employ around fifty youths. Mm -hmm. And it all started with uh, a, a sum of a uh, hundred thousand and escalated to now almost uh, 1.6 million mm -hmm. so when when the youths come into youth fund the starting point is from a hundred thousand and that is why you see most of them uh, wanting to start businesses because it is quite reasonable even the repayment uh, uh, methods are quite reasonable for them so we have uh, so many examples we've had uh, I visited Kisi last year and I was really happy to see that uh, 
uh, one of the youths who had started uh, a clinic ha was now through youth fund able to uh, come up with a level four hospital and i like the fact that the youths of this nation they just don't do any business it's like they're trying to uh, to provide solutions to the community mm -hmm. like recently in mombasa uh, youths who en uh, engaged me and uh, they wanted to, you know, some parts of Mombasa there is a problem with water. So they have this project of water catchment and, uh, you know, we've been having discussions and I'm trying to see how Youth Fund or other stakeholders can come in because what they're trying to do is to solve that problem that uh, of water. Mm. Yeah. So there are quite a number of success stories. The disbursements has been good in various uh, counties, although we have some counties that it is lo it's still low because of... Um, uh, like for example in the coastal and northeastern the problem is with uh, the interest you know as muslims we are not allowed to take money with interest but as a fund again through uh, our strategic plan we've re re-engineered and we are yet to launch our sharia compliant product mm. so yeah i think we're doing well so far mm -hmm. yeah are we looking at lead time having reduced because like you said that was yes. one of the complaints from a lot of people that okay yes. we've tried to access the loans yes. by the time anybody even responds to us and even starts to look at our stuff exactly. we have forgotten that we applied yeah. how have you been able to look at some of those things uh, we have digitized our systems mm -hmm. I realize uh, most of the things were being done manually but uh, with the digitization and having a proper ERP systems that uh, now I will confirm that youths are able to get uh, loans within two weeks or latest three initially you'll tend to hear stories of people applying for the loan this month and getting the money after six even six months mm -hmm. sorry to say mm -hmm. i'm giving the fact as yeah yeah yes and now and what if somebody walks into the fund today make does and is compliant and then makes an application mm -hmm. what are you looking at in terms of timing Okay, it's a, a, like I said, two weeks, three weeks maximum. Okay. Because again, we, uh, we have to undertake them through that training. Okay. That is why it's taking a little bit of time. Mm. Yeah. You know, one of the things that has always baffled uh, citizens like myself mm. is whenever we hear of funding opportunities for the youth, what we hear of is yes people seeking to apply and many who are not able to actually successfully get the loan. So now my question is, what is it that the fund does to ensure that those who are eligible actually understand how they can go about, even if they do not come to your offices, yes, how do you ensure they actually understand these processes? Because sometimes somebody may simply fail because they don't understand the process. Mm -hmm. They don't know what to do. How do you ensure that they actually understand this process? Okay, we normally uh, create awareness uh, in Mashinani. Uh, our officers visit most of the of the youths within the Mashinani, as well as we try to create awareness through our social media platforms, uh, through WhatsApp and uh, even Twitter and uh, even Facebook. Uh, and that is why I'm here. <laughs> to inform them that actually youth fund exists i mean this is a way of uh, also educating whoever wants to know about youth fund let me explain why i'm asking the question further for instance yes do you have a deliberate program say for instance okay in how many counties mm. does the youth fund have a presence in 40 uh, the all, all counties precisely now, yes all these counties say for instance have radio stations like this one mm -hmm. they're not called distribution room mm. some in vernacular mm -hmm. Some people understand messages best when it's in vernacular. Yes. Some like reading. Mm -hmm. Some like watching TV. Now, I think you know where I'm going with this. Yes. Precisely. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have a program of that sort so that everything that is possible, mm -hmm. every medium that is possible, mm -hmm. is used to ensure that the youth get to hear mm -hmm. and in hearing so that when your officers visit, they will have heard of the program because people do listen to radio, people do watch TV. They will have heard of it, and it, it makes it much, much easier. Now, beyond this, do you have set seminars, set um, sensitization processes where people know, on this date, the youth fund are coming to talk about this, and they're coming to this hall in this place. Do you have 
such a scheme? Yes, we do. We do have a work plan for, and uh, also the um, the staffs have a target. We give them targets, and uh, most of the times, uh, okay, I know sometimes there are budget uh, budget uh, constraints, but uh, I am happy to say that uh, I. I like the fact that most organizations and uh, our st other stakeholders who also engage us, whenever we uh, we place a proposal to them that we would like them to at least um, fund us to train the youths, they come through. So I will say that through my leadership, I have, I, and that is why I've really insisted that uh, it's important for every officer, including the CEO, now uh, now and often, to appear in these radio stations. Myself, I have been in several radio stations, not only in Mombasa. But also, there's a time I went to Meru, and I had an engagement with uh, some of the radio stations there. And uh, again, um, normally whenever we have these sessions, we also involve media so that people could uh, understand and could hear us out and understand what exactly we do as a fund. Mm. Yes. Have you found also that you've made the requirements easier to manage for applicants because again that was another thing that came up that you know mm. the requirements were from here till kingdom come kingdom come and yeah. back yeah and that you had to bring you know the former you know white goat of your grandfather's <laughs> i mean everything that you could have to bring you would need to bring just for you to seem as though yeah. you were then eligible mm -hmm. so have you been able to grade down on some of those things to then make it easier because if you talk about it being a hidden gem mm -hmm. that people mm -hmm. are not accessing mm -hmm. they say well you know all the things that they ask me to bring it's mm -hmm. more painful to apply than to sit where i am actually i realized as youths uh, one of the problems that we have is that uh i don't know we we don't want people to know what we are doing i think that's the issue but i'll give an example when i was in narok mm -hmm. one of the requirements of youth fund is that as you apply for this loan you must provide your bank account and you see the youths there are like uh, we are in where we are Mm. Maybe even hardly a bank out here. Mm. Why would you ask us to provide bank statements? I mean, why not MPESA statements? And you see, okay, at some point they do have a point. The other thing, the, ch the most challenging is uh, the fact that Youth Fund asks for securities. Mm. And that is the, one of the things as a board, we, uh, as we were strategizing, uh, we decided that we need to do away with the uh, matter security mm. and uh, introduce uh, something else. Maybe, um, uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe reduce the amount of money that we give to the youth so mm -hmm. that we help them grow and we don't ask such things and it can be a hindrance for them to access the credit. Fatima Barayan is our guest this hour and as we look at the fund, one that um, many at the onset of, and we're just going through history here and even before your time, uh, Fatima, is that many start, were very excited about it and then with some of the things that we saw, the delay and then the many requirements and then now as you're saying some of those things sorted out coming to the place whereby we're seeing more people then coming out and getting what are some of the challenges that you have seen that you have heard why people still will say okay well it's a great thing but um, you, one of them you talked about sharing information you don't want people to know too much about you and what it is that you do so mm -hmm. the likelihood of you coming to the fund whereby I'll be <laughs> asked questions <laughs> then reduces my chances what are some of those issues that you see Okay, I will, I will confirm that uh, Youth Fund is doing well. Mm. The only challenge we have is that whenever our team, the communication team, wants to record some of these success stories, first of all, um, it's so unfortunate that uh, the youths do not want uh, their stories to be told out there, number one, because they are running away from care. I don't know why. <laughs> number two, uh, <laughs> the issue of black tax. Somebody will like, I wouldn't want my, the people from my village to know whatever I am doing. I don't know, the fear of witchcraft and all that. <laughs> so, you know, as youths, uh, to go to the story, me. Those are real issues that are brought before Yes. Oh. And then you see, the other challenge is, as a fund, we have uh, assisted you uh, to establish your enterprise and sustain it. And then it's so unfortunate that, uh, I don't know whether I should say this on air, but sour. it's so unfortunate <laughs> that uh, when uh, the youths <laughs> want to... To, when the youth wants to be, when we want to record those success stories, uh, most of them even ask us to pay, and you know, you you know, we cannot pay you because, uh, I mean, uh, you, that's you, gonna be a budget query. You, like, why would, you, why did you, you spend? You, you, you've uh, given them money to, to do, do well. then yes, they want you to pay them to pay them to 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 tell their story exactly, which is 
the success story which is based on the money which we, you you enable them to have exactly well, so you see i will say youths i'm also a youth and i know how difficult it can be to deal with us but uh, i will say one step at a time i am sure that uh, uh Everything is going to but be... No, but it's, it, it, it's, it's mm. an interesting thing that you mention. Yes. It's not negative. Yeah. It's interesting. And I, I, and I am urging all the youths in this nation to change because if you want to do business, you must be a risk taker and you must uh, comply with uh, whatever provisions of the law that you're supposed to... You see, if people are asking for money, it means they've understood. Mm -hmm. They are business-minded. Yes. That we understand. Yes. But... Then do they understand their responsibility? Because mm -hmm. this is almost like biting the hand that feeds you. Mm -hmm. If we have enabled you to be this, mm -hmm. surely, why then should we pay you? Do they understand the concept of corporate social responsibility? Exactly, that's the whole point. And you know, I want to say this it's funny that uh, some of the times we call for these uh, sensitization forums yes. and uh, okay some the turnouts are good but others are not that well why because uh we normally engage other stakeholders like kra uh other institutions within the government uh, the parasitos just to come in and create awareness maybe officers who handle agpo officers from kra officers from always or women fund just to understand the opportunities that are within government but the moment the youths hear about kra nobody wants to come to that oh mm -hmm. mimi kujulikana you know such things you know so you know sometimes uh, sometimes i even wonder as a chair i mean uh, where are we heading as a state i mean the youth mm. today are going to be the leaders tomorrow no this mu th this must be turned around because what kra does they don't understand without kra even the funds that you give them would not exist yes 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 and that is why most of them will will use as an excuse that uh, we have applied for this loan but uh, we've not gotten it in time the reason why if your documents are not uh, as per required because mm -hmm. some of them deliberately fail to place that kra pin in that application mm -hmm. so how then or even the bank statement so how then are we able to know that you're in compliance with the law mm -hmm. for us to give you that credit you yeah. know so it, it's a challenge to us but we try to manage them we try to create awareness the importance of them paying the taxes the importance of them no uh, com in compliance uh, with the law mm -hmm. the importance of them knowing that ignorance of the law is no defense you know we mm. try let me ask this question what is the age limit of the youth now i'm not asking so, so that i can be considered <laughs> it doesn't matter how you stretch it i cannot be referred to as a youth <laughs> now <laughs> what is the age limit for the youth mm -hmm. that's question number one question yes. number two mm. what is the limit what's the minimal amount that the fund affords mm. the applicants or can when they're successful mm. and what is the maximum amount mm -hmm. that the fund affords uh, successful applicants the age limit is 18 to 34 mm. but for those who have transited like transited <laughs> to 35 years yeah. uh, and uh, onwards mm. like ct and do <laughs> probably maybe i'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> if you're in a group, uh, a group that is registered and is willing to take youth fund, as long as uh, your group, 70% of the leadership are youth, then you can uh, benefit from it being mm. a member. And uh, we normally give uh, from 100,000 to 20 million. But sometimes, if uh, depending on the kind of project or the business you're doing, if you're doing so well and we're checking from your records, from your statements, and even the business, how viable it is, we can. It's, you you don't need to start from 100. We can start from 300 mm. onwards. Like you know, we have the, the talent alone instead of giving them because we know in creative industry uh, with the equipment and all that, it's it gets it gets quite expensive and the production and all that. So sometimes we, we tend to give from two million yeah mm. yeah what's the rate of payback um of these loans okay initially it was at uh, uh six percent but now uh, since we restructured it's at eight percent because again as a way of income generating to and then again eight percent is still very reasonable mm. compared to the banks and uh, the okay, other okay so that's the rate of interest yes that's charged. and it's annually okay yeah but what's the rate of folks who take these loans and start to repay their loans do you find that most people are repaying their loans on time or yes. what's the rate of default kind of thing i guess is where i'm going 
Okay. Uh, the, re the recovery rates are very well mm -hmm. because you tend to find uh, most of the counties, uh, they are at, I will say, 81% mm -hmm. oh. in terms of recovery. Mm -hmm. Though a few counties, there are challenges in some constituencies here and there, but uh, the rate is really quite uh, impressive. It's at 81%. Yes. But then that is a good thing. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is a very good thing yeah. because if you have people who are compliant mm -hmm. and they're in the majority, mm. then what it then tells you is that these young people actually understand business. Yeah, I, like I said, Youth Fund is a gem and mm. it's very it's a benefiting many youths in this country. Mm. The only challenge is that uh, we try to improve on the visibility, but I have already explained some of the challenges we have with the youths not coming forth and showing what exactly we do also mm. because of the reasons I in just some came. of the areas where you have problems, what is it that the youth tell you their problems, where there's a low uptake mm -hmm. of this, the availability of these funds? Okay. Uh, I'll give an example of, uh, like I, gave an, I, I earlier gave an example of the coastal and northeastern, yes. the issue of interest. Mm -hmm. The other things will be, um, you'll tend to have that... Uh, within the group they cannot manage themselves for example if a group is of 10 people and they've already taken this loan and then you'll tend to see that uh, one of them had to maybe go out of the country to work or the group is not uh, the group i would say the group is not stable you know we you we youths have a problem of uh, um what would i say like if we are 10 of us and we've started a business and then at some point the group is dismantled and you know some problems come what makes you think that that problem is only with the youth <laughs> i will say that because my through my observation mm. is that most of the i will say most of the msmes like uh i i think in kenya we have 98 percent and uh, uh around uh 31.7 being uh, female owned mm -hmm. and 44 around 44 they are about being um, uh, male owned and maybe 17 percent both women and men but out of this you will see that uh, uh, those SMEs that are uh, owned by youths, n most of them, uh, they fail because there is no that culture of company. Like somebody wants to do something just because they want to do it or maybe also, again, because of the competition out there. Mm. Is, it, is there room for a mentorship element to be introduced into this where you attach that business, it is a youth business, mm -hmm. but you have oversight of people who've been in business longer because mm -hmm. the idea of giving youth money is an excellent one. Yes. The early, the mm. sooner people begin mm. venturing into business, mm. when they get older, mm -hmm. they'll of course be better at it. And it's even better when they fail mm -hmm. because then they learn some very, very hard lessons mm -hmm. and which hopefully would help them into the future. It is far worse when somebody who is much older wants to start business. It's in, far, far worse. In fact, I would want to agree with you at some point. I normally, whenever I visit these counties, I try to see if we can, we have a, either any group or an individual has a patron supervising, let me use the word supervising on what they do. And I was really impressed when I was in Kirinyaga last year, there's a group which started a filling station. And in that group, uh, in that group, it, it, uh, we have youths who we have youths and those who have uh, passed that age. Mm -hmm. But like I said, also they benefited as members. So the members in the group in this group who are older uh, have been like supervising that group, and it was really impressive that through the leadership of these members who are seniors, the group has been able to buy their own land. They benefited from youth fund, started like a small filling station. They have now bought a huge lunch, but it is because of that supervision mm -hmm. of their seniors in that group. Mm -hmm. So if we could be having uh, uh, most of the uh, of the seniors coming uh, and uh, supporting the youths, and I really appreciate in that uh, because our officers, before they engage these youths, it's through the chiefs, and mm -hmm. even the church elders, and you know, we give loans to people who are known by by the society and it's even easier for us to to reach out to them in in terms when we want to do recoveries and we can't find them mm -hmm. so i will urge also uh, the community to at least be supervising whatever their children or the youths in the society are doing mm -hmm. i think uh, it can be uh, used as a guidance and also the youths to learn from the lived experience of the of the seniors mm -hmm. so that they can uh, grow their enterprises how does the fund plug in to what the rest of government uh, is doing 
in the country Mm -hmm. you know because when we talk about economic development and looking at a way in which you can develop actually young people for their business how does this now plug in to that national agenda or that national policy mm -hmm. mm. it is through uh, a creation of employment because as a funder like i mentioned in every a uh, hundred thousand we give i believe that's a uh, three to four uh, number of jobs created so it, it 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 contributes to the economy of this country through providing that uh, credit facility and it is through that that uh, a number of jobs have been uh, created mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. you know one of the things that um, i think probably gives you a problem mm -hmm. as a youth fund mm -hmm. is yes you may have people who have an interest in doing business because they've seen what business can do mm -hmm. But they actually don't understand what business really entails. Even when they choose a business, they don't understand that to be able to make this thing successful, there are certain things you must do. Okay? For instance, much as you say they mention the fee of KRA, at the end of every year, there have to be returns. Yes. They are just the structural necessities that a business must have. And a lot of these things require training. That is why earlier on I asked about the training opportunities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, there are government institutions that can do that for them. Yes. There are people who can help them understand this. Mm -hmm. And then even when they start a business and as they grow, there's the element of good governance that is required within businesses. Mm -hmm. Now, if they are to grow beyond what they think, these are things they must understand and they must be taught. Yes. Again, let me go back to the question again. Mm. When you set these things in motion, what is a success rate? And do you measure the success rate if you do? And what is the failure rate of some of the programs you have mm -hmm. in sensitizing and educating the, the young people? The success rate when we educate, it's a, I will say, is at around 73%. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and that is why, as a fund, we decided that we must work in synergy with other uh, state corporations mm -hmm. that fall within uh, what, what we do like uh, we have had engagements with KIE we have had engagements mm -hmm. with NEA we have had engagements with the Ministry of uh, MSME and uh, we have had uh, uh, en stakeholders engagements with quite a number of the uh, state corporations just to ensure that uh, we all come on board and uh, try to create awareness to the youths on what is expected for them to benefit from this government mm. yes where do you see it going if we look at the future um, and the things that can actually be created, and you can draw a line and say, look, we've seen a rise in businesses or we've seen a rise in the establishment of businesses mm -hmm. as a result of the mm -hmm. funding mm -hmm. that young people, that mm -hmm. youth have gotten mm -hmm. uh, from this fund. And again, you're looking mm -hmm. at 18 to 35, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's a place where people can come together as a young business. Mm -hmm. Where do you see it? Ha where do you see it going in the future in terms of what it can actually do to establish economy, to establish economy building businesses as a result of this five billion, however much that's available at mm -hmm. one time? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. where do you see it going? Okay, I see youth fund to uh, to be. I, I wouldn't want from where it came from. Mm -hmm. uh, I see it going to be very stable, stabilized in a manner that uh, it is a uh, very reasonable more reasonable than it is now mm -hmm. for the youth to access credit i mean uh, the economy is dynamic and uh, each time we need to come up with the uh, new policies just to keep at par with the changes and uh, you might want to agree with me every regime faces its own challenges like uh, during the late mze jomo kenyatta's era mm -hmm. it was all about uh, managing post independence uh, expectations during the late moi it was all about managing hiv and trying to educate the youths during uh, the late uh, former president uh, Mwai Kibakis it was all about unemployment and illegal gangs mm. and you know and uh, as at uh, the um, the last president president Uhuru Kenyatta it was still unemployment uh, drug abuse and all that and now president Williams uh, Ruto it's still unemployment and uh, among other things drug abuse unemployment and the rest so i will say that uh, every now and then the economy keeps on changing things arise but as uh, every institution as a fund we try to ensure that um, we prepare policies that we uh, we, see, we we know that uh, in the near future or in future are going to make sure that uh, at least they solve some uh, some number of the expected uh, changes that mm. are going to take place mm. yes how have you dealt with corruption issues at the fund? 
Okay. Whether that be historically before your time or now with <laughs> certain things that may be by, said. By uh, digitizing our processes, mm. you know, everything right now, the, from the loan op, uh, applications, the procurement processes, we have a system for that. So it is very well, it's transparent. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And then again, with the introduction of the government's uh, payment uh, methods, I mean, uh, that has really dealt with corruption. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, one of the things that is always difficult is having a youth conversation. Mm. What the youth want. Even as we implement some of these programs, do you have an idea or do you have a process by which you determine or understand what it is that the youth prefer or how they would prefer certain things to be done? You know, CT, the youths are very dynamic. Mm. Even when you see, w w sometimes you tend to, to know that or believe that you're actually solving a problem for them. But even if you solve that problem, still you have not solved that problem. You know, like somebody will say our main issues are to uh, access to maybe IT facilities. But again, when you bring that, those IC, IT facilities, this is just an example. Mm -hmm. When you bring those IT facilities, still they will tell you that... Uh, uh, we also have a problem with some other thing. I mean, the whole point here is that you can never solve the uh, the issues of the, I mean, the problems of the youth. And that is why I said, life is dynamic, economy is dynamic, mm. and we must try and see on a, we need to balance. Mm. Yeah. You mm. see, we need to strike a balance. Pa part of that, the question I'm asking is answered in your being here. For this reason, you are, you're a youth. Yes. Yes. It is not polite to talk about a uh, lady's age, and I will not talk about your age, <laughs> but you are youthful. I can see that. I you, am. Yes. I would probably say I'm 33. You yes. would probably yes. say, okay. okay. Yeah, I am proudly. Okay. I'm proud to say I'm yes. 33. Okay. Yes. So it means, even as I ask the question as mm. a youth, you would understand the problems that bedevil yes. the generation better than I could. Yes. Yes. And that is why I'm calling it a spade a spade. Yes. Yeah. You know, for us to look for, so to uh, find solutions, we must accept reality. Mm. And that's our reality as youths. Mm. We have so many challenges. We can never be satisfied with whatever. But like I said, it's because uh, life is dynamic, economy is dynamic, and uh, we must try to strike a balance. Mm. Not being satisfied is not necessarily negative. Ne yeah, it's not, but... It could be that you're ambitious. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that is why we need to keep at par with the ambitions. We do want an ambitious youth because whether the current leaders or those who are in power mm. like it or not, unless you die young, you mm. will be old. Mm. And yes, and, and <laughs> <laughs> you'll get there. Yes, and yes. when you're old, yes, there are people who are younger who will take over some of the things that you used to do, mm -hmm. whether you like it or not. Or not yes. yes, that is what is going to happen. Yes. So, isn't it m desired that? Mm. We spend a little more energy than mm -hmm. we are currently mm -hmm. in looking into the interests of the youth because mm. they're going to be in charge of this country at some point. Yes, and we need to because what we have is the time and energy and resilience. Mm -hmm. And you tend to see that uh, one of the solutions we could have is uh, uh, innovation hubs. I, I mean, uh, technology. Mm -hmm. You'll tend to see that uh, through technology, it is very... Um, uh, you, it is very easy and viable for the supply chains, and then again, uh, it is through technology that uh, most of the youths, uh, you know, um, spend most of the time and make a lot of money out of it. I mean, there are so many solutions to it. The only pro challenge in uh, in the community, in the society, is that you're expected as a leader to solve the problems. Mm -hmm. You have solved some of the problems, or maybe you have solved all, but still, uh, people feel like it's still not enough. Uh, maybe there, there's a there's a list of priority, and you have you're done with that list, but then people will still have like uh, they will still think that there's still m uh, more that needs to be done, mm -hmm. and that is why uh, this is as a result actually of what I earlier stated that it is because uh, life is dynamic, the economy is dynamic, mm. so we we are we are bound to expect these changes, but we must be ready for them. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Just matters of clarification mm. with the youth um, enterprise development fund um there has also been the hustler fund yes you know mm. and of course there's looking into speculation as to whether the two have been collapsed into one mm. or whether they're still two separate entities mm -hmm. or who goes where can you give your clarification on that Okay, the Hustler Fund is doing a good job, mm. but there's a difference between Hustler Fund and Youth Fund. For the Hustler Fund, it's basically, 
a help the those that are in micro mm. uh, business but you see when when uh, when, uh, when a youth or anybody who is in uh, hustler fund and wants to grow to an SME they'll tend to want uh, more capital so that they can boost their business and that is where we come in as youth fund again you know for youth fund we provide like I earlier stated that we provide marketing and linkaging support mm -hmm. for these youths and then again we also provide entrepreneurship skills we take them through uh, through training mm. so um, there's a huge difference between hustler fund and uh, uh, but I like the fact that hustler fund um, um, encourages the the, um, the culture mm. of saving mm -hmm. and I so believe also through youth fund we do because any youth who is doing a business who has access credit from youth fund and does a business also saves mm -hmm. yes mm. yeah but the only thing I would maybe propose there's a youth who recently engaged me his name is uh, John Mark and you know he brought this brilliant idea I am looking forward to see this idea being implemented mm. he mentioned about an emergency fund that one thing that the hustler fund maybe needs to the whole point was about uh, anybody can access uh, that fund mm -hmm. from uh, maybe uh, I have forgotten my phone and I'm with you on a ride and I urgently need money yeah. I could access it from your phone yeah mm -hmm. so uh, I, I linked him up with the CEO Hasla fund. I am hoping that they've engaged and we'll see hmm. yeah. what happens. Yeah. Okay, so even as we wrap this up, I mean, looking at uh, what you encourage young people to do, I mean, still coming off where we started, where you said this is a gem. Yes. And there are very many young people, there are very many youth in the country who would need this yes. uh, for a business. What would you say to them today? Okay. Allow me to talk in Swahili so that you like Ijana, mwenye yako mashinani, uh, aweze kufahamu kwamba kuna uh, idara ya serikali inaitwa Youth Enterprise Development Fund na ninge ningehamasisha kwamba waweze kujitokeza kwa wingi wachukue na wanapochukua at least waweze ku, ku, kujitokeza na kuelezea faida waliopata kupitia Youth Fund so that we can have uh, the other youths also know more about Youth Fund and benefit from it yeah mm. but also again it is a revolving fund forget about what the elected leaders uh, some of them who will say that mm. please when you take this fund re please return the money mm. so that it can benefit another youth mm. and grow the economy of this nation indeed yes good words and uh, thank you very much uh, for being with us i mean just enlightening and you know opening up our minds to understand yes. exactly what happens here yes and then you know uh, as a resource for many young people around the country thank mm. you for being here well, this mm. hour fatima barayan is the chairperson of the youth enterprise development fund she's been our guest this hour thank you for being here and we look to uh, further you. conversations in the future this is the situation room the only way to start your day.